Hey there, this is Seth Juarez from Channel 9, coming to you from NDC Oslo with the man, the myth, the legend, John Skeet. This is our last session, so I just oh. I wanted to have, like, I wanted to end strong with you. So, no pressure. <laughs> How you doing, bud? Yeah, not so bad, not so bad. Fantastic. Yeah. So, I, I will tell everyone that I learned C Sharp from C Sharp in Action, was it? C Sharp in Depth. Oh, dang it. <laughs> Every time. Every time. No, C Sharp in Depth. I bought this book. It came out how many years ago? Uh, nine years ago. Nine years it, ago. It came out. I got hard copy at the same time that I joined Google. So when I came back from Nugla orientation, mm -hmm. my hard copy was there waiting for me. Fantastic. Awesome. And, and now we're up to revision uh, version four. Fourth right? edition. Yep. In early action, uh, early access mode at mm -hmm. the moment. I already yep. purchased mine, so he did. I no saw him pressure. do it. I wouldn't trust him otherwise, but no, no I pressure. saw this. I, I saw the confirmation on the page. So I emailed you to come on uh, to Channel Nine because I love talking about C Sharp with you. And you said, "Oh, there's this thing I want to show you." Mm -hmm. And since we literally only have like ten minutes, let's just dive in. What do we got? Right. Okay. So uh, we have talked before about uh, documentation and how it's a pain. Oh yeah. And it's a huge, huge thing. Um, but for no time. We're using DocFX, okay. and uh, there was an, an issue, someone raised an issue saying we should give more uh, snippets, more samples for how to use stuff. Mm -hmm. And we've already got a place in the user guide where we can put things, uh -huh. but it's nice if it appears in the documentation in the code, yeah. as well, in, yeah. in the reference API sure, sure. guide. So um, I wanted to work out a way of doing that. We had this, this nodatime.demo um, project already that mm -hmm. was just well, here's some demo of how to do stuff. Mm -hmm. And because I like to make sure that demo code will actually work, of course. it's written in terms of unit tests. Mm -hmm. However, it's now written in terms of unit tests plus a little bit extra. And okay. the little bit extra is very small. So I've got this snippet class. Um, and wow, I've actually written docs for the snippet oh, stuff. Oh my goodness. So at some point, this a lot of this code should move into a separate open source project or maybe within DocFX itself. Sure, who, sure. who knows? I'm sure they'll but, take pull requests from John but, <laughs> For the moment, it's just a for method that's generic. It takes a value and returns the value. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in particular, that's not going to mess up. Any code that you've already got, mm -hmm. um, that you've got as a unit test, you can turn this into a snippet by putting snippet.4 somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you can have it in multiple... Uh, multiple places, if I've got a good example, uh, possibly in local date time demo. Whoa. I'm yeah, not we're, not, we're, not we're not trying to move. We're not trying to move. Slow down, Visual Studio. It's Slow fine. Slow down. Um, yeah, I can't remember which example okay. has multiple, but you can have a snippet that has multiple snippet.4s. And the point of snippet.4 is to tell the snippet extractor that we'll have a look at in a sec. Mm -hmm. Right, what, what are we trying to demonstrate here? Okay. So, you know, we know that this is in local date demo and it's simple construction, so we're going to be looking at a constructor. Sure, sure. But we want to have some way of telling the code that. So, if we do snippet.4, that, that's not going to change how this runs at all. I could... No, it's literally returning the value. Run, yeah, so I could run this, prove that it works, and all is fine. However, this isn't really what we want to see in the documentation. So. You know, some people may, may be happy seeing unit tests as samples, mm -hmm. but it's probably not as nice as, well, I want something that I can copy and paste and just run, and it'll dump something to the console. Got it. Okay, okay. I think I'm starting to understand. As I saw this, and I looked at it, and I'm like, not quite sure what this is doing. Right. You've written this uh, static method that you pass in a thing, it gives it back, and then you have a bunch of assert methods, which are nice, but don't and make for is, good docs. Right, and this is just plain end unit. Got it. Um, and at the moment, I've only got stuff for end unit because it's all I use for no design. Sure, sure. However, the idea is this is easy to read as a developer, mm -hmm. um, yeah, as a no design developer. Um, it's easy to write and it will definitely stay correct because I'm doing all these assertions. Sure, sure. But as you say, it's not suitable for actual you know, display. Yeah. So the next stage is to run this snippet extractor tool. And this was fun. Uh, I wrote this at a different conference and ended up staying until yeah. up until one you know, in the morning. You, and we all have done that where the code is just keeping us up all night. I wrote Stack Overflow questions about this. Nice. Yeah, uh, because this is, I've hardly done anything with Roslyn. I've always sort of wanted a reason to do stuff with Roslyn. So with Roslyn, um, I have to use a pre-release pre version, mm -hmm. but the Roslyn uh, MyGet repository has all kinds of versions. Sure, so, sure. you know, if we... Uh, we look, we could see which actual version I'm using. It's sort of the um, 
2.3.0 beta 2, oh, you know, yeah. who knows, yeah. I'm sure things have moved on since then. But yeah, it's a beta version so that I can use, it's an MS build workspace. Mm -hmm. I haven't had to do anything strange to that other project file. Uh, because it does target multiple projects, and this took me ages to find out, you need to tell MS build which target framework you're using. But right. anyway, once I've opened the project file, I then create this snippet rewriter. So I load all the snippets in. This is just loading the project. This is the source code. Right. And it's just a Roslyn tree. But then I can find all the methods that contain a snippet.4. Oh, I and see. And I can find the member, because that snippet.4 contains an expression. Sure. I can say, well, what is that expression? Oh, you're calling the constructor. This must be documentation for that constructor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I can even take docfx. There's some bit of docfx that says, convert this Roslyn member, this symbol from Roslyn, into a docfx UID. So I can immediately attach whatever I'm going to produce, which is the next bit, uh -huh. to the right bit of the docfx documentation. I see. Rah. And the way that docfx works, it makes it pretty easy to add extra bits to the documentation. We'll focus on the snippets here, but I'll show you in a minute okay. just a couple of extra bits that we're doing. Okay. So we've got Roslyn source code at this point. Well, that's nice because that means I can remove the snippet.4. I can just replace the syntax node that was snippet.4 and something in the middle uh -huh. with, well, just have that something in the middle. So goodbye snippet.4, right. it served its purpose. It's literally just a marker. Right, says exactly. Here. And I can remove it because I can remove it and still make sure it builds. Sure. This is good. I can then take all assert.r equal and say, well, forget the first argument to it. I want to replace that whole statement with console.writeline, the second argument. Which is effectively something you could run. Yes. You could cut and paste that into a program.cs and it would work. And this is good, but suppose you have several snippets in a file. Um, which using directives do you need? Well, I'll tell you what, why don't we build a new c -sharp script, add all the using directives that we might need, and then ask Roslyn which ones aren't needed anymore, and get rid of them. Oh, so you're like literally like rewriting code I'm rewriting for the code, examples. And then it's better because we now have a snippet that is a c -sharp script, which we know is a valid script because right. we've compiled it and made sure it builds, no. and we can run it. And we can get the output of that, and we've got a load of console.write lines. So we can capture that output, and that can then be in, in the documentation, part of the documentation as well. Now you should literally see, you should, if you write this you code, you will see You should see this. this. So this is the constructor that we were looking at. Uh -huh. There's the sample snippet. You see, we've got no using n unit because even though that's in the original code, it's not, it's not needed one. here. You know, we've got system globalization because of culture info. Sure. But if there's another overload that doesn't use that, it wouldn't be in there. So this is a completely self-contained snippet. If you have a reference to node time, you can run this directly. And there's the output for it. So I'm really pleased about Holy that. Holy cow. So uh, now let me ask a couple of questions because it's clear to me what you're doing. You're literally, mm -hmm. you're taking all the tests, you're creating a new... A and class. just to be clear, this isn't my normal set of unit tests. I think unit tests should be testing something. This isn't really testing. The only reason I wrote it as a unit test is to prove that the, simp uh, the snippet really did what I want. But it's, they are snippets designed to be, this is for documentation purposes. I see. So okay. you might have a separate uh, assembly. I've got a whole separate project for, you know, I've got about 10 demos and 15,000 unit tests. So you, know, you don't want all the unit tests for this constructor in as snippets. These are designed for this. Makes sense. But verified and run as part of the, you know, this, this output is literally part of the build procedure is transform that snippet and then run it and capture the output so that anyone should be able to get the same output. And because if your output changes because of whatever changes, mm -hmm. it would be yeah, reflected directly. Absolutely. So what is unclear to me is the 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 matching the UID inside of DocFX because right. I know DocFX you have to do DocFX minus something you point it to the, the what's the DocFX dot JSON how does it know to link those two things together? So let's have a look at the uh, if I've still got the output I've been switching branches a few times uh, recently so it's possible that this won't won't work and because I'm building multiple versions in the um, in the node of time docs here, if mm -hmm. I go back back home, um, you can see the API for multiple versions. So I've got all the different branches. I feel like we need it to gets... do another talk yeah. on, the, on just how you do that, because um, that's crazy. But uh, if I go into the temporary build output, um, so I've got a docfx.json, 
and uh, that includes this objon stable overwrite. So any markdown files in the overwrite directory will be included and um, I've got availability, since and snippets. Mm -hmm. Snippets is what we've just been building. So each of these in this markdown file is there's the UID and I didn't have to write this time, I didn't have to write any code to generate that. I could just say, docfx, please give me the, the UID for right. that symbol. And then uh, a custom docfx property called snippet, which I invented yeah. as it were, and just say all the content is the snippet. It's C sharp with an output that's, that's just marked down to include. I modified the template slightly to say, if there is a snippet, call it sample and have yeah. it there. And that's all it was. But the other two files are since. So that's a since annotation for every single member. Um, and availability says whether you can use it in .NET, um, in .NET 4.5 or in .NET standard or both or whatever. And these come up here as well. So if I go to, um, let's have a look in 2.0. If we look at the, um, say, local date, we'll see that's been available since 1.0 and has this availability tag. Whereas for time zones, if we look at BCL date time zone, that will say, OK, it's been since 1.0, but it's only available in Net 4.5. Oh, and at the same goodness. time, I can generate a change list. Here are all the changes from 1.3 to oh, 2.0. Yeah. And that's all auto-generated. But how are you getting the UIDs from docfx? Uh, so for the snippet thing, it's really simple because there's a member in docfx. I'm referring to the docfx assemblies, and they use Roslyn as well, so that's dead easy. Mm -hmm. um, for the other things, for the synths and availability, in one case, I'm using mono.sessel, and I've got some horrible code that may well fail in some ways sure. um, to convert a mono.sessel ID into a docfx ID. Um, and I think in availability, Sorry, in the synths, I think I'm doing it in a slightly different right. way again. But I'm mostly generating them myself, which is not nearly as nice as the, the snippets one of just... Yeah. So this is amazing because I use docfx for my right. machine learning library. I totally need to use this snippet.4. Right. Is there code that I can use to generate these? Is it, it generating the MD files for me and putting it in the directory? It's generating all the MD files. You have to modify the docfx.json sure. to say this is where they are. Um, it's all currently... Clearly, this is... This hasn't got anything to do with node time. No, it doesn't. But because it's part of the build and I haven't got anywhere else to put it at the moment, it's in the node time GitHub repository under build. Okay. There are a bunch of things. Um, you, know, you would need to do significant engineering to make it proper. Agnostic, I haven't, I haven't yeah. got the time to make it a full open source project, but it Called would be nice if people. someone did. Yeah. Well, we are out of time. That was, that was amazing. John, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, my friend. Always I'm like going to look at this and see if I can find a way to use it in my <laughs> stuff. It's awesome. Thanks for watching. Tomorrow, we're going to continue with day two of NDC Oslo. Uh, we'll start with a session, I think, at 9 a.m., and then we'll come on at 10 a.m. Uh, live. Uh, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.